This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, I have been absolutely stressed out getting ready for DEF CON this year. I'm wearing my DEF CON 32 shirt and everything, but I want to get at least something cool out for you guys while I'm there. As some of you may know, I actually film a week ahead, but because I'm going to lose a week to DEF CON, I've actually filmed four videos in the past nine days. It's been nuts. But that doesn't mean I don't have something cool to show you guys. Today, I'm going to teach you how to run an actual operating system directly off of the Flipper Zero and just the Flipper Zero. Now, is this the most practical thing in the world? No, not really. I mean, you can run an operating system off of USB drive, almost anything. But today I'm gonna show you how to do it with the Flipper Zero. Some people said it couldn't be done. Some people said it shouldn't be done. Other people purely don't care. Either way, let's get at it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna need to uh, get your Flipper Zero and I'm running the latest version of Momentum because it does have mass storage and all the other things that I need. Now, will this work on other firmwares? I'm pretty sure it works on at least Rogue Master and Unleash. I'm not sure if they ported mass storage over to official yet, but either way, I'm using Momentum. So if you have any questions, just use Momentum. It'll work just fine. So I guess step two after installing firmware is going to be to get the actual file for one file Linux onto your Flipper Zero. So let's hop onto the desktop and get that done. But first, plug in your Flipper Zero to the USB-C cable. Make sure you have a cable that you know carries data. Super important. People are always plugging in the wrong cables and saying it doesn't work. Make sure it carries data. All right, to the desktop. Okay, here we are down on the desktop. We're gonna open up QFlipper. If you haven't downloaded QFlipper yet, I don't know what you're doing, but just Google QFlipper, you'll find it. It's super simple. I've got everything updated, and all we have to do is go into the SD card, then you'll go into apps data and then you're looking for mass storage now if you don't have a folder that says mass storage yet you can either create one just do mass underscore storage or what you can actually do is if we open the flipper itself we can go into apps do go into usb go into mass storage and then create a disk image so if you create a disk image you can name it whatever you want just go to it doesn't really matter create image that will actually make your folder for you so you won't have to worry about anything else so if you run into problems create a folder Either way, let's back out of that and get back into the folder we need to. Let's go to back, open up the file browser again. Here's our mass storage. I've already got one file Linux in here. I've got it on my desktop too. You can just drag and drop it. It's going to say selected file is too large upload anyway. You can click upload here or it's a lot easier to actually pull the SD card out and install it with an SD card adapter because it's so much faster. This will take forever. I'm not going to do it again because again, it's going to take like five minutes to transfer. Y'all don't need to watch it. But once you have the one file Linux in your mass storage device, you are ready to go. So once we're there, what we're going to end up doing is go into apps just like we did before USB mass storage. And then we're going to select our disk image. And then here is our one file Linux. As soon as I click the middle button, I'm pretty sure it's going to cut out the screen, right? Yep, there we go. And that means it's actually running. So right now you can see it just opened up this file location, which is actually the Flipper Zero. So you can see there's an EFI and the boot, and this is gonna be the image it's gonna boot off of. So that means it's ready to go. So all I have to do now is plug it into a computer and then select it as a boot device, and I should be able to get it going. So let me switch to another camera to watch the laptop so you can see how this whole thing goes. All right, so first things first, I did run into a little bit of a problem on here with not being able to get into the actual Wi-Fi drivers of the laptop itself. So I'm actually going to use a, an external Wi-Fi. I know this is kind of cheating, but again, this is mostly a cool party trick. So let's plug that in. And then we're going to take our Flipper Zero that it's already running the USB mass storage. We're going to plug it in. Let me grab the end of my ridiculously long USB-C cable. All right, cool. Plug this in over here. There we go. We'll leave that up here. Will you stay? Fantastic. Looks like it's going to stay there. And let's power it up and see if we can get it to boot off this guy. So power up. On this laptop, F11 is gonna change it to our boot select. So we're gonna sit there and spam F11 over and over again. There we go. So you can see right here, storage two, that's flipper mass storage. Very, very good sign. Let's hit that. With any luck, it'll actually boot up. Now this takes forever, it takes forever. No worries, just wait for it. It's gonna be just fine, but this will work. While we're waiting, that's actually a great segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay.com is your one-stop shop for any project you wanna work on. Halloween's coming up and I'm actually going to a trunk or treat with one of my friends and I'm gonna have PCBWay help me win the contest. Hey, I'm gonna need PCB setups to run all the lights and then I'm gonna have something to put all the lights in. Guess what, PCBWay, it's got you covered for all of it. They can make custom PCBs to any spec you have, multi-layer, multi-color, anything. Plus, they can 3D print pretty much anything for you. If not, they can CNC it for you. 
Hey, even if you're feeling overwhelmed by the project, guess what? They've got engineers on board that'll help you with any problem you may have. Then you can go to the shared project store, the module store. There's just so many different resources at PCBWay that again, anything you want to do, they got you covered. Thank you so much to PCBWay for your continued support. You guys are absolutely awesome. Let's get back at it. Hey, I told you it wasn't fast, but it will get there. I'd say all in all, that was probably two to maybe five minutes. It's hard to say. Now the password for this is root. There we go. And once we get in here, we can actually do font size. Let's go to seven. Let's see if we can read that. Actually, font size, 10. Take it all the way to 10. Font size, oh, nine. Font size, nine. Cool. Total professional. Okay, now we can at least read what's going on. So you'll, you'll notice up here, it says to connect to Wi-Fi, read this document. That's actually what I'm going to be going through in the background. So if you want to read that document, you can read it there. I'm just going to go and go through all the commands and we're going to connect ourselves to the internet. So first command we're going to run is actually slash etc slash init.d slash wpa underscore supplement start. All right, so we've successfully started our Wi-Fi. That's extremely good. So now all we want to do is do wpa underscore CLI. And that's going to open up the command line interface for our network adapter. So we can just go ahead and hit scan, S-C-A-N. That's going to scan for the different networks. Once we're done with that, we can go to scan underscore results. And we can see all the networks. Look at that, networks. Now, obviously, this is super important because this means that we have access to our wireless network adapter. So now that we know that we have these networks on here, we can see them. We're going to add one. So go to add underscore network. So now we've created a new network, it's network zero. So all we have to do now is set underscore network zero SSID, and this is gonna be quote, the name of your Wi-Fi access point. In my case, it's this. And then since it's got a password, we're gonna to go to set underscore network zero, because this is network zero, PSK quote, and the password. Okay, now all we have to do is enable network, enable underscore network zero. All right, started, good, and then quit. From here, there's one more step because we need to actually get an IP address. All you have to do from there is type in UDH CPC, there we go, dash I WLAN zero. Hey, and we have an IP address, that's super, super good. So now we're technically online. Let's give it a shot, ping google.com. There we go, we are online. So we can do pretty much anything now that involves the internet. Control C will stop that. Now what's cool about this setup is it already has air crack on it. This has both Aircrack and Reaver, so we can just type in Reaver and see all of the commands for Reaver. Same thing with Aircrack, A-I-R-C-R-A-C-K-N-G. And now we have Aircrack running. It's super cool. Like right now, you can actually run this computer off of the Flipper Zero. Again, we're not using the hard drive really and do a Wi-Fi attack with it, which is really cool. How cool is that? I know it's kind of a little silly, but it's actually a lot of fun. And the fact that you can boot an entire operating system operating system off of just the Flipper Zero, I think is really cool. Honestly, I'm not super comfortable with Aircrack or Reaver at this point, but if you want to actually see the entire workflow for trying to crack a password with the one file Linux on the Flipper Zero, let me know down in the comments. Maybe give it a shot. What's also kind of cool is it doesn't do anything weird to the boot order. It doesn't mess anything up. As soon as it's disconnected, it's just like nothing ever happened. Obviously, there are much better tools out there. I've got Medicat running on a USB key that I keep on my keys at all time. It has a ton of really, really good tools for pretty much anything you want to do. Now, running Medicat off of the Flipper Zero would be pretty cool, but it's like literally 10 times the size of one file Linux. So I have a feeling it might be a little tricky to make it work with that hardware. Speaking of Medicat, if you've got any interest whatsoever in it and you want me to cover it, leave a comment down below. I think it's such a cool hardware suite. Huge shout out to Wrench from Official Firmware for hooking me up with this one file Linux. I'd only heard rumors of one of the Flipper team actually running a standalone operating system off their Flipper. So yeah, seeing this in action is really cool. So thanks again, Wrench, for that. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been kind of keeping this in my back pocket for a little while because I thought it was kind of a cool idea, but I knew it wasn't a super long video. So I thought, hey, for a video doing while I'm at DEF CON, this might be a cool thing to do. And speaking of DEF CON, I will definitely have a comprehensive video on as much stuff as I can possibly cover from DEF CON, either coming up next week or the following week, depending upon how much stuff there is. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are absolute legends, and we'll catch you next time.